Hello there. I am doing the Noble Records summer tag that Dylan over at Noble Records just kind of put up. And he's got a list of 20 questions. And you're supposed to answer the question by showing a record. So the first one, an album or song with summer in the name. I've got <clears throat> Adam Hart Mother. This is Pink Floyd. This is the UK 1970 version of it. And on, what do we got? Du, 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 du. On side two, Summer 68 is a song written by Rick, Rick Wright, Richard Wright of Pink Floyd, Rest in Peace. This also, he's got another one with show a album with an animal on it. This would work for that, but I'm not using it for that. So an album with Summer in the name, Summer 68, Pink Floyd, Adam Hart Mother, one of my favorite albums by Pink Floyd. They toured this album in 1970, and that's my favorite touring year. Okay, the next one, Latest Heavy Pull. This one has been on my list for a very, very long time. The 13th Floor Elevators, Psychedelic Sounds. This is the November 1966 version, Mono. You know the difference between the November mono and the January 67 mono because on this it's got three um, columns of credits and on the January one it's got four. It also has this address and there's no printing credit on this one. So this is an original first press OG mono. 13 Floor Elevators is one of my favorite bands. My first dog for many years was named Rocky, R-O-K-Y. Every time we take him to the vet, they would try to correct his name. But this is the latest heavy pull. The next one, Whack-A-Mole album. <clears throat> I'm just, I'm going to grab something from here. Okay. The Nuggets, original artifacts from the first psychedelic era. This is Promo copy, I think it is a white label. Oh, it is. It's white label, 2LP, white label on both. I've kind of made it my mission. I did that early on, is getting the albums from artists in here. I had too much to dream last night, Electric Prunes, Nighttime, The Knickerbockers, I don't have that, The Vagrants, Shadows of the Night, Remains, Castaways Count Five. Great album. This is my Maslow Whack a Mole. And that is Nuggets Original. Let's put that back. An album with a great story. Nope. An album cover with an animal on it. Well, I'm going to do the Chocolate Watch Band. This is the Inner Mystique. It is their second album it's a great album there is an owl is there an owl it's an owl i think it's an owl it's a bird some version this is on tower this is a us 1968 on tower um super great the first I, I did a video if you go back in my videos probably in march i go into detail about this particular album really good one i need the mono this is the us stereo Okay, number five, an album with a great story. This is Pink Floyd, The Wall. This is Colombian second pressing. Actually, no, Colombian fourth pressing. So when Roger Waters played in Colombia about five years ago, about five years ago, I went down there with a bunch of friends and we... It, I took it upon myself to take everyone around to record stores, and I guess we went into some shady areas, and I don't really have a good story other than we went to places we never would have want, went to in Bogota, Colombia, finding Pink Floyd records. We definitely stood out, but it was a great time. We didn't get robbed, and we saw the Roger Waters concert, and it was great. So that's kind of my lame story, but it's a really cool alternative cover of Pink Floyd, The Wall. It's still two albums. See this other side of this is that, and it, it is a gatefold, gatefold, but I'm not gonna take it out. 
That is an album with a great story. Okay, I admit, that's a lame story. But again, it's a cool, interesting cover. Pink Floyd, The Wall. Okay, the next one. An album we would be surprised to see in your collection. Well, that's Olivia, Olivia Rodrigo, Guts. I like Olivia Rodrigo. Um, this has the song Vampire. I'm a godfather, and my goddaughter loves this song Vampire. Or so I thought. Last summer, it was her favorite song. I got the record, I got the single, and she came over about a month ago, and she hates Olivia Rodrigo right now, apparently. But I still like Olivia Rodrigo. So this is something that my mother would be surprised that I had in my collection. The next one, Cheap Heat. Okay, that's easy. Say Cheap Heat. Green Re Credence Clearwater Revival, Green River. This is a U.S. pressing. They released three albums in 1969, Bio Country, Green River, and Willie and the Poor Boys. Their best stuff came from 1969. I grew up in Washington, right next to the Green River. So I had this at an early age. It says what, Green River right there. You could still get this really cheap and you can get them clean really cheap. I know they've reissued them. There's a Acoustic Sounds has a, a really good box set, but you can find this, Green River. A 45 or alternative format. Okay. This is the Black Angels with Rocky Erickson. This is them being the band. They do both these songs, Thank God for Civilization and Bo Diddley's A Headhunter. So in 19, 2008, the Black Angels were Rocky Erickson's and Rocky Erickson of 13 Floor Elevators. They were his band. So they would play a set and then Rocky would come out and play his set and they were his band and they used the jug. It was the most psychedelic and 13th Floor Elevator sounding Rocky solo tour that I've ever seen. I've seen Rocky probably on five tours, six tours, met him a few times and these guys did the best job. There's a a concert video out um, live in Halloween at the Wilshire, the Wiltern, and I'm somewhere in the audience. So this is that single, 45. This goes right along with favorite music documentary or biopic. In 2005, this album came out, You're Gonna Miss Me. It's a biopic on Rocky Erickson. It's actually quite sad. In the end, it shows him getting his act together, but he was really in a bad way. And his family took advantage of him. The label took advantage of him. His old bandmates took advantage of him. And this is a really interesting story. I don't know if you could stream it, but a great DVD. Pick this up if you can. This is maybe not my most favorite rock film. Maybe The Wall is, but this is right up there. Rocky Erickson, You're Gonna Miss Me. A film about Rocky Erickson. Okay. A box set. I've got many box sets that you can see up on the wall, but I am choosing this one, Bee Gees. This is the Bee Gees, what do we call this? The studio albums, 1968 to 19, 1967 to 1968. It has the Bee Gees first album, the Bee Gees first from 67, Horizontal and Idea. This came out in 2009, Kevin Gray cut it, Norman Masloff mentioned this. I did a video on Bee Gees' first album, the Bee Gees' first, with Mazzy, but I never put it out. I wasn't a very good host. He was a very good interview, but I kind of sucked. But maybe I will put it out sometime. I will ask Mazzy. But we talked about this era of the Bee Gees, 1967, 1968. It's their most psychedelic. It's as close to the zombies as you can get. It's really good. Uh, this is a great box set. It's kind of expensive now, hard to get, but pick this up if you can. It's three double albums. Uh, each album from of uh, each of the albums plus a second album for each with demos and alternative versions. The Bee Gees. Most trashed record in my collection. Well, I just got this the other day. 
this would be Led Zeppelin II RL. I got this in Montana. I just had another video talking about it. This is the most trashed album. I probably can't show how trashed it is. I found this for $18 in a Goodwill in Montana. And yeah, you can't really tell. I don't have many trashed albums. I've kind of thrown them in the trash. But I bought it for $18. I found another one for $49. That's equally trashed. But this is loud and proud. The music and background noise are just as loud and drown each other out. This jumps three times on side one, track two, and jumps one time, side two, track four. Right now, this is my most trashed in my collection. It is a RL. At the thrift store, I couldn't play it, so it was a blind listen, and I'm probably going to end up giving it away. A local album. This is a local album. Introducing the Sonics, featuring the Witch and Psycho. These guys are from Tacoma, Washington. This was in the 60s. This is like a 67. Uh, this came out in 67. They had their Here's the Sonics before that, and they had Sonic Boom. And the, But this is from the 67 release. I grew up in Sumner, Washington, which is two small towns from Tacoma, but both in Pierce County. They're local to me. Introducing the Sonics. And, and they're from Tacoma, and that's where I got one of my RLs. An album from a faraway land. Back to Pink Floyd. This is Pink Floyd, Obscure by Clouds. This is the South Korean second pressing. I've got what? VG Cover, VG Plus. This is from South Korea. I've got The Wall from South Korea. I've got Obscure by Clouds. And I have Piper at the Gates of Dawn from South Korea. This was the 1972 film soundtrack from the French film the Valley by Bar Barbette Schroeder. That was his first film. He went on to do a bunch of big Hollywood blockbusters. It's got a different cover, but this is an album from f a land far away. A soundtrack. I'm going to keep with the Pink Floyd thing there. Zabriskie Point. Michelangelo Antonio. Antoni, this is a Italian filmmaker. It's a really bad film that what it, came out in 1970. Pink Floyd did the soundtrack along with others. They've got um, the, uh, the, talk, the Pink Floyd, the Kaleidoscope's in here, the Grateful Dead's in here, the Youngbloods, Jerry Garcia of the Grateful Dead, another Kaleidoscope, and Fahey. This is the Italian first pressing no, this is the second pressing of this. And in addition to that, I have Sound on Film, radio program from May 1970. This is a one LP disc talking about this film with film credits talking about Zabrinsky, What's the Point, and talking about the music. It's like a companion piece with that. Zabrinsky Point is a place in Death Valley, which all the Pink Floyd people go there and they get their photo taken with that sign, which of course I've done. A lot of the, a lot of the film is from there, but it's a Zabrinsky Point soundtrack. Okay, number fifteenth, your highest recommended album. Okay, this is an easy one. This would be Os Mutantes' first album. I'll take this. I can't really take it out of the cover anyway. I did that. This is Brazilian, 1968. They take Brazilian sounds, combine it with U.S. and U.K. psychedelic music, and you get Os Mutantes. If you've never gotten into the Os Mutantes, check them out. Their first three albums, even their first four albums, are really good. This is an original, 1968. This is the beginning of the Tropicalia movement. There's an album on the wall you can kind of... These are all Brazilian, right there. It's a compilation that um, called Tropicalia that has a lot of the good Brazilian artists of the time. It's really good. I highly recommend this. I think I have two two reissues of this that I could pass on to someone if someone was so interested. Um, I have a few versions of the first pressing because usually you get them trashed. It's hard to find a clean one, and I finally did. 
So that is your highest recommendation, Os Mutantes. Let's put this back in. Okay, highest on your want list. Okay, there's this, there's this kid on YouTube. Where did I put his name? Soren Vinyl. He's, he's a young kid. I've been following his channel. He's got to be 18 or 19. And he is going around finding all these amazing psych records. And I'm so jealous. I mean, he, he gets mostly what I have. But I've spent years trying to find this stuff. And he just picks it up. So the highest in my want list is the July UK psych record. And it was on Major Minor. And at the top of my head, this July is, what, 1968? I'm not sure, but Soren, and I don't know his first name, he went and found a U.S. white label promo of July. I want to know what he paid for it. I want to know where he found it. I got to find the video, but I can't believe he has that. And I have it as well. This is the July U.S. And he had a white label promo. Mine still says demonstration not for sale. And this was a very pricey one. I'm sure I paid way more than he did for his. But good for this guy. I'm going to put a link to his channel. If you like any of this type of music, this is all he covers. This and rock and Sabbath, but a lot of psych. And he's pulling some really good stuff. But July, this is the highest on my want list. Before this, it was that 13 floor elevators that I just saw the mono from 66. Okay, a channel shout out. I'll put this in the link, Crazy Jimmy. He's got a channel, he's been doing all this um, with the, the Acid Archives. He's done probably 30 Acid Archive videos where you take an album from that's in the book and talk about it. And he, his knowledge is so deep, he knows these albums so well it's it's great but it's he's been doing these acid archive videos crazy jimmy i'll put a link there this guy knows his stuff and if you like this type of music you should follow him it's he has like what 500 followers or 400 followers it's crazy you should have way more than that that's crazy jimmy um a silver lining in vinyl i didn't quite understand that question so i'm going to go back to Dark Side of the back to Pink Floyd. Dark Side of the Moon. This is a UK first pressing, the most the earliest you can get. The A2 B2 stampers. I've I've got the second pressing and the third pressing. The reason why I put silver lining. What did I say? This brings collectors together. There's a website called the Pink Floyd Archives, and you can go over every little pressing of Dark Side of the Moon. And I probably have 30 to 40 pressings of Dark Side of the Moon. But you can go over every little detail. There's so many variations. I think this is the go-to Pink Floyd album to have. Um, this is the silver lining in, in, as far as it brings collectors together to talk about it. And mine's a VG VG. So I, hopefully someone will bring me together and get me a near mint, near mint. But those go for a lot of money. Again, I didn't understand the silver lining question, but Dark Side of the Moon. Okay, last one, a promo. Nope, nope. The last one is a steal of a deal. I don't really go to record stores and find steals of the deals. I usually pay what they're worth and I have for a long time. I got them way back 30 years ago, I'd get, but I don't remember that. But I do remember this steal of a deal and I'm bringing this up. It's Grateful Dead, steal your face. And I'm bringing this up only there's a second one because I bought probably 30 years ago when they first started collecting dead. Someone gave me all their Grateful Dead. So this is just seven Grateful Dead, but I have three cubes of Grateful Dead up there. And then I've got probably 20 bootlegs. And there was a steal of a deal because it was free. So that's my steal of a deal. I just saw... The Dead and Company at the Sphere. I need to make a video about that. Um, July 5th. It was really good. Okay, the last one. A promo. I collect white label promos. I go to Record Safari here in Los Angeles. He pulls all these amazing white label promos from 
places in the hills. And I didn't get this there, but that's where I get a lot of them. But this is, what is this? This is the 13th floor elevators, Easter everywhere. This is the white label promo. I'll show the white label. And actually I do an Acid Archives video about this album. It comes with the lyric sheet. And it's right there. I do need an upgrade. The album's really clean and these covers don't really last. But I, this is my favorite, I think, white label promo. That's it. That is the summer vinyl tag. Thanks, Dylan. Thanks, Soren Vinyl. Um, that's it. Thank you.